This is the second video of the Yao Method tutorial in which I'll show you how we solve our last four centers and solve our final cross edge so we have all of our centers solved as well as our cross. So after solving your first two centers as well as solving these three cross edges around one center, it's time to solve the remaining four centers around the middle layer of our cube. Coming from the basic reduction method, uh, this can be a little bit more tricky because we're restricted in terms of the move set uh, that we can do. So for example, we can't just turn this front face like that or you know, turn this bottom face because that will mess up the edge, pair, edge pairs that we've already solved. So when we're turning outer faces around the cube, so for example this one, this one, this one, and this one, uh, we need to make sure that the outer face that we actually turn doesn't have an edge pair next to it or doesn't have an edge pair in it. Um, so for example here, the only outer face that we can turn without messing up our cross is this top one. So coming from the reduction method, this is a little bit more difficult and something you need to get used to. So adjusting this, uh, these three cross pieces uh, to actually make way and allow yourself to do this outer turn. You might need to solve certain cases a little bit differently uh, as compared to when you were just solving the centers without having any cross pieces solved. So it's actually pretty straightforward to restrict yourself from actually messing these up. So what you can do is hold the cross pieces so they're like this, put your thumb on this front cross piece and your middle finger and your ring finger, or depending on how you hold it, that might be one of the two, um, but put those fingers on the back and hold it like this and do not let go of these pieces. So here we have this thumb on the front and the, these two fingers on the back. And what you can do then is just use your right hand and your index finger um, to solve the remaining centers without letting go of this front cross edge and these back cross edge, this back cross edge. One good way to think about it is pretend that this thumb and these two fingers are essentially glued to their corresponding cross pieces. So these two are glued to the back one and this one is glued to the front one. The main reason that we do this is to keep track of these three cross edges and really ensure that they never get messed up while we're solving our last four centers around this middle layer. So now that we've got this grip on the left hand side, it's time to solve the remaining four centers. Um, and we do this in a broadly similar fashion to how we did it, just with the normal reduction method. So we look for pieces. So let's start out by, by solving the blue center. Um, so we've got this blue, these two blue, blue pieces here on the left, and the other two blue pieces are down here on the bottom and over here in the back. So what we can do is instead of rotating to actually pair these two up and then put them in the back like that, Instead of rotating, remember to keep these, this grip, what we can do is actually do a move like that. So move all three layers downwards once on the right hand side, like so. And then what we can do is pair up these two pieces. So do a U2 R prime to pair these two up. And then we can put these two on the bottom like that. So now we've solved this center. Now Above the blue center, again, you'll need to be very familiar with, the, with your color scheme, but above this blue center and above the yellow center like that. Um, so if we're holding the cube in this position, we need to put the orange center here. Um, and so we can do this by firstly making a line. So we've got this one orange center piece here like that. And if we want to, for example, put this orange center piece next to it, we can't just go like R prime U R like that. Um, because that will actually mess up this cross edge. So remember, keep your, keep that grip. What we can do is go like this. So do a, another three moves, R, three R, and then do R prime F R, or R prime U R now in that case. So we use these three layers to actually rotate these centers instead of doing a full rotation, because doing this rotates the centers without messing up the position of these edges. So now that we've solved this bar on the front left, we can do another of those big R rotations to actually put it onto the bottom. And now the, what we need to do is solve these two pieces into this bottom right without, again, again, without messing up these cross edges. So what we can do is pair these two up. So if we want to move this one over here, for example, or if we want to move this one down here and pair it up with this, we'll actually need to do, we we'll actually need to rotate back like that. Um, even though we just put this one on the bottom, we need to rotate back like that because to pair these two up, we need to actually use this outer face. So by doing a slice move like that, pairs these two up, then use the outer face up the top and then slice back. And then what we can do to solve those two is just do RU2 R prime like that. Again, what we can do is put these two on the bottom like so. And now we have the last two centers here and we want to figure out how to solve these last two centers without messing up these edges. 
And what we can do is we need to make these two parallel to that. So to do that, we move our cross edges out of the way, align our center like that, and do that like so. And then what we need to do is actually solve them. So we can't just go r prime f2 r like that, because doing so actually moves this edge piece out of the uh, out of its solved position. So what we need to do is again do another one of those big r's to move this edge piece out of the way, and then we can go r prime u2 r like that to solve the last two centers. The main thing that's different that you really need to spend time getting used to is doing these big R moves uh, throughout your centers because you will need to do them a lot um, in order to keep these uh, edge pieces preserved. And remember to you know, keep this thumb on the front, keep these two fingers on the back um, so that you never actually have a chance of messing these pieces up. There will be a lot of occasions where you do actually need to adjust these outer layers a lot and so don't be afraid to yeah, use those big R rotations uh, for your benefit. Eventually this should become more and more subconscious, but I do have some example solves at the end of this module where I show you more examples of solving these middle centers without messing up these cross edges. So after you've solved your centers, the next thing to do is put your cross onto the bottom and align your cross pieces with your centers. So you've got these two, these two, and these two. So make sure you align those using the D face. And then the last thing to do is solve the fourth cross edge pair into this bottom position. So you can do this on the front, you can do this on the right, it doesn't really matter. Basically all you need to do is just solve the one cross edge into this position. And so in this situation we have these two pieces, like so, so the white and blue edge here and the white and blue edge here. All we need to do is just do a simple slice, pair up the edge, and put it into its position. Because there are so many different places around the cube that your last two cross edges can be, uh, it will be the case sometimes that you run into tricky situations. So for example here we have these two opposite one another, so what you probably have to do is just slice and do your flipping algorithm and then solve this cross edge either into the back like that, or do something like a d2 then f then d2 like so. Some people also like to build their last cross edge while keeping their cross on the left. Uh, at this stage that's probably personal preference, uh, but it does make the, some of those tricky situations a little bit harder. But for example here where we have a nice case, uh, we can solve these two by doing something like this. So instead of slicing using our U layer, what we're going to do here is slice using our L layer. So moving this piece down, putting this piece into this position by doing a U prime R U, and then slicing back solves this edge pair, and then to insert it into this position all we can do is an L, F prime, L prime, like so. And then after that you can rotate and do your remaining edge pairs. So after you've solved the last four centers and the fourth cross edge, it's now time to pair up the rest of your edges and finish off the 3x3 stage of your solve.